What's happening? This is the CF Racer 1 from Ride One Up. Sweet looking bike. I've been looking at it for a while. I'm really happy to get it in my hands. I bought this bike. Going to throw in some B-roll footage just uh, from an eye candy perspective. Very short specs. All specs will always be in the description of all my videos. So we basically have 700C wider tires in a gravel bike frame. This is a 56 centimeter gravel in black. Hopefully you can see in the camera you get a lot of this metallic sparkle in there. So you have a 250 watt Bafang hub motor in the rear. Really nice SRAM rival componentry, including a rear derailleur and hydraulic disc brakes. We got a 36 volt battery here in the down tube. I think it's seven amp hours. Um, put, I'll put the uh, advertised range on the screen right now. I'm actually gonna go ride this today and give you some performance data on a secondary video. But I just wanna show you, I'm gonna talk about my first experiences on this ride today and just let you know what I think. Build quality looks great. Um, I like the clean lines with this kind of one by drivetrain. Um, I'll probably be putting a rack on here, but I'm gonna put on my tool bag on the seat and my water bottle here for some beverages on the ride. And we're gonna check in a couple times on the ride. I'm just gonna tell you what I think of this thing. Supposed to be under 30 pounds. I don't, I haven't wet weighed it yet, but I think it's pretty dang light. Um, I'm using a hiking pole here is to work as my kickstand because this doesn't have a kickstand on it. So um, everything so far is looking good. Um, this is actually set up at the minimum saddle height. The seat is all the way down. So this will be one of the dimensions down in the description as long with standover, actual standover and some other things. Again, I always put a lot of information down in the description. So click down there, click on like at the same time and subscribe while you're doing all those. And leave me a comment, I'd like to talk to you. Right, right here in the tops is pretty nice. It's got this interesting wide flat kind of one piece stem. It does limit your ability to adjust this a little bit, but it looks real cool. The two shift levers are down here, kind of on the inside of the drop on the hoods. So you can reach them from the hoods or in the drops. I'm gonna kick it up a little bit and see what kind of top speed we actually get. That rips along real good. I'm pretty sure I could reach 28 if I was so inclined. These uh, SRAM Rival hy hydraulic disc brakes have a really nice feel to them. The Rival shifters have got a little different style where the same lever shifts, does upshift and downshift. So for downshift, it's like a little tap, and for upshift, it's a longer tap. It takes a little getting used to. I did zero adjustments out of the box, so like the fact that this is so dialed uh, right now is great. So I just, I'm gonna let you settle in here with me for a minute. Uh, the bike's dead silent. Like uh, there's a, well, maybe not dead silent, but it's, it's, there's just the smallest amount of whir, and these tires are quite quiet as well. It seems like it's got some real nice hubs. It really likes to coast. For 15 miles per hour, like we're doing here, it's, you're kind of looking to assist, assist one or two. The assist has a really nice uh, gradual quality, even though it's a cadence sensor. It doesn't tend to just push you up right against the top speed. While it doesn't feel like a torque sensor, why the, why they, the way it would respond to actually pushing, uh, it responds quick enough and almost torque-like in its cadence response. But is super stable. Gravel bikes with their wheelbase and everything, they just tend to be real stable like this. 
Okay. So it looks like I'm gonna see where we actually land here and where assist level one hits in. I'm just I'm just moving my feet enough to actuate that cadence sensor. Well, I think it's about 10, but it's so the bike's so light and so easy to push above that. I'm like I'm I'm I feel like there's assist to 12, but I'm pushing the last two miles per hour. So that's a really great uh, indicator of what the likely efficiency is going to be with this. I'm kicking back up to level two. I feel like I'll be riding level two quite a lot. So the display there shows 14, 14, six to 14, eight. With a little bit of ink, like you do feel a drop because you don't have, you only have 250 watts. Um, so you're going to, you're not going to have a lot of hill climbing oomph. So rather than relying on the motor, you're going to be relying on yourself a little bit more. But that's really the only time you're going to need to do it on this cadence sensing bike. I feel like the carbon fiber frame is soaking up the bumps pretty well. Just like no, no noises except for like that clicking of the drivetrain right there. But no rattles, no squeaks, no odd feelings. It's just, man. You can get a bike like feels like this at this price point, 20 to 20, under $2,500. Blows me away. It really does. Uh, the shifting is so nice and crisp with that sham rival. I worked at a bike shop and upgraded for some base level Shimano stuff to some nicer SRAM stuff. Your shifting experience is way, way better. So I'm, I'm putting out very little effort and I'm riding just above the assist level, very, very easily. Hundred percent does not look like an e-bike. So I'm pedaling like, I haven't changed the assist level. I'm just putting out a moderate amount of effort. And that's easily, bumping me a couple miles per hour up over the speed limit. You can see the power and wattage little demand graphs there. So I'm not, I'm not you know, requiring a lot of power from the system. All right, this is a gravel bike, of course. So I, it's so new, I don't want to get dirty yet. Um, but I will be doing some trail riding. All right, I'm nine miles into my first ride on the ride one up, CF Racer One. Really nice ride. Um, tires, even though Sanabi's really quiet. Uh, the motor, very small amount of noise. Very, it's really not noticeable over wind noise. Um, nice and light, responsive. A little long. Um, I'll put those dimensions of, of the top tube in the description. Uh, for me, a 56 is usually the right size. I find myself reaching a little bit more than I'd like. Um, but this handlebar style, I can't really do anything about that. Um, but I have any tick down battery at all. I've went almost nine miles. Right, mostly in the cis level one and two, been really nice and smooth. Yeah, the brakes feel great. All in all, uh, man, pretty cushy. I'm probably gonna put my Brooks saddle with my suspension seat post on it. Uh, but other than that, it's, it's really nice riding bike, very stable. I mean, you can tell the components and everything, it rides, it runs and rolls out really nicely. So um, I'm finding that saddle a little hard, uh, that's, but saddles are a very individual thing anyway, because it, it's hard, it's really not about the, anyway, saddles are very individual. But yeah, you can see that sparkle from the metallic paint, barely seeing the ride one up here in the sun. Uh, I threw on a little carbon fiber bottle cage, really, real, I, I don't know, I kind of like, I think maybe it's worthwhile spending the extra miles to kind of get used to that little more forward position. Um, but really digging this thing so far. Uh, there'll be, I'll have a follow-up video with some detail of my range specifics. Um, that's really it, because this doesn't have a throttle, so I don't do the normal performance tests on that. 
but I'll have some range and I'll probably do a hill climb just kind of tell, tell you how I think that does. But thanks. I, I think I think Ride One Up is really doing really an amazing job, honestly, for what you're getting for the money. I know I see this as compared to like four or five thousand dollar bikes um, from Specialized and Trek. I don't doubt that at all. Um, very solid. Very nicely done, Ride One Up.